Panasvili, congratulations on your new book. Thank you very much. Thank you, Myers. Tell us about the experience of writing a book. Uh, it was uh, writing the book was a very daunting experience because I don't think I'm a writer naturally. Um, even though you have thoughts in your head, and uh, sometimes it's easy to uh, to speak them. However, putting them on paper and making them make sense is is quite daunting. And, and difficult, but it was uh, an enjoyable uh, new experience that, yeah, I truly enjoyed it. Um, it was free in, in, in a way. So what kind of leadership do you think we need? Servant leadership. That's the leadership style that we need in this country. I feel for a very long time in this country, leaders have been put on a pedestal. As if they're better, they're smarter, or they're just these demigods, you know? Like, yeah, they, they've got this halo effect on them. When actually it's just human beings just like us, they're just privileged to be in these positions. And for me, I feel like a lot of times leaders don't serve the people, like really serve the people, where they understand the grassroots issues that the, the people are dealing with on a daily basis, and actually put processes in place to help them um, basically be uplifted from the situations they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it every day. Uh, I grew up in Alex. You know, I, I view Alex, I'm turning 43 this year, and I remember Alex as a kid. But on a drive, they're still the same. Alexandra has not changed. So for me, it's that. It's, for me, it boils down truly to a lack of servant leadership where you actually look at people's situations and say, no, we have to change this. It, it really needs to change for, for everybody, you know? They tell us about doing it yourself. And you talk about, I did it myself, loner. Yet you say, we need servant leadership. Is there a time for... I did it myself, because that's also a very strong narrative, particularly from the West. Yeah, um, that narrative of I did it myself alone, uh, that's one of the, the hypotheses that I put here uh, for the type of leaders that are out there. Mm -hmm. You know, people who believe they did it themselves through their bootstrapping, through their skills and knowledge, and not taking into account that actually there are people that have supported them. Mm -hmm. People have opened up doors for them and given them opportunities. People have actually believed in them. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't see a place for it, especially at this time, uh, for, for leaders like that, because we all need help in one way or another. We do. That's why uh, Mike is mentoring me, because mm -hmm. I understand that as much as I feel I am talented, uh, I can achieve much, but I know I can't do it by myself. I need guidance. I need direction, you know, uh, someone to show me uh, where I'm going wrong, where I'm going right, to ask me difficult questions to, to enable me to introspect and look at myself, and maybe when necessary to pivot you know, in another direction so that I can start to then follow my path uh, in a true sense. So I, I don't see a place for that type of leadership. In your experience, what makes a good mentee? You must be willing to listen. Uh, you must be willing to learn. And you must be open to different views. And you must not be stuck in your own ideas and thoughts. And um, I think you must also be willing to have a great relationship with your mentor. And for me, mentoring is not just a one-way um, event. It's, it's us reciprocating and exchanging ideas at the same time, because I also believe mentors learn from us, even though we might be less experienced or younger than them, but there's certain things they learn from us as well in terms of how to interact maybe with the younger people or different types of people from different backgrounds as well. So for me, it's that, just knowing that it's a mutually beneficial relationship, but as a mentee, you have to play your part and you have to deliver. If a mentor gives you a task to do, you have to go and execute it and come back and give feedback. Uh, so um, let's talk about the great man. We had, we had Nelson Mandela, and you talked about the great man leader. Don't we need another great man, a Tabombegi and Nelson Mandela? I really think we do have the leaders in this country. Um, we just need them to do what they're supposed to do. Because in South Africa, you, have, you just drive around, just drive around, and you see the situation the country is in every day. You don't need anyone to tell you. You don't need the news to tell you. You don't need, just drive around. You know, the dichotomy of it is you drive down Louis Bota Avenue. Um, let's say you're driving down from Houghton Orange Grove. On the left-hand side is the opulent Centene, et cetera, the richest square mile in Africa. On the right-hand side, just over the road, is Alexandra Township, one of the poorest townships in the country. That tells you everything you need to know. And when you think about the country going forward and the country we're living for our kids, is that sustainable? Probably not. What I would tell a youngster in Alex, um, I, I would say, start with school. 
um, focusing on school, making sure you do well. Um, because that, I believe, makes things a little easier because you're then open to potential bursaries. And then those bursaries could take you to places where potentially you never thought you could be. Uh, so start with that and do well at school. And be curious as well. Um, as I said in the book, I was lucky that because I did so well academically when I was in, high, in primary school and high primary school in Alex, I was in a forbidden opportunity to go to the previous Model C schools for Saturday school, uh, Red Hill and St. Mary's. And when you see that world, you start to be curious, like, wow, so this is what it's like on the other side. And then the fact that my aunt and my grandmother were domestic workers um, in the suburbs, so I would go there over school holidays and see that as well. And that will spark my intrigue as well. So that also helped. And at the same time, I guess, just thinking of yourself outside of Alex, that there's a, there's a world outside of Alexandra or any township for that matter. Especially the, the, in this age with social media, there's so many platforms that one can go and look at and see what's potentially out there. Um, for me, school, hard work, curiosity, and just a drive um, to succeed in whatever area or field that one is interested in. I think more than ever, there are opportunities for young people to, to participate and, and be seen and, and take advantage of those opportunities. So I, I just say that. And yes, get a mentor, even from a young age, get a mentor. It could be a teacher at your school that you, you really um, are in good, good, good relations with, that you, you see as a figure that could advise, give you advice, and, and etc.